climate change on health can be thought of in, in kind of different layers. There's some direct impacts. So you see the direct impacts of climate change on the geography of malaria. And then there's indirect impact because climate change forces people to move. And then because they are internally displaced people or refugees, they become more vulnerable to disease and particularly to diseases like tuberculosis. Uh, the Global Fund uh, invests in over 120 countries across the world, helping governments and communities fight these three terrible diseases, HIV, TB and malaria. Over the last 20 years since the Global Fund was created, we've made huge progress in reducing deaths and infections from these diseases. But the risk is that climate change could reverse some of this progress. Tuberculosis has been the disease that follows wars and conflicts and mass movement of people. Tuberculosis is a disease that thrives on people being in close quarters, being all together, like in a refugee camp, or highly stressed, um, again, people who've been forced to move. So we see there being a real risk of displaced people having, to, having a higher uh, vulnerability to both TB and HIV. The challenge in all this is how do we maintain continuity of service? And to my mind, the key thing uh, that should come from this health day is a real sense of urgency, of understanding how climate change is impacting health, but also acting to protect those most at risk. There's a, there's a kind of cruel irony in what's happening with climate change's impact on health, which is that if you were to pick um, the people who've had least responsibility for climate change, it would be a two-year-old in Chad or a three-year-old in Mozambique. They haven't had much opportunity to do much in the way of carbon emissions, but it's actually these small children in some of the poorest communities in the world who are now right at the front line, the people most at risk from the impact of climate change on health. What this means is that the funding models and the models for providing services are going to have to become more flexible. Uh, it's one thing if you have a health facility and people living in a stable community. It's a different thing if those people are moving and you have to provide clinics out of the back of a truck or a van and diagnostic services um, that are also um, mobile as well. Ultimately, the answer to beating these diseases and building sustainable systems for health is not actually donor funds. Donor funds can help pave the way, but ultimately health systems have to be supported through domestic resource mobilization. And this is where the reforms, the actions being taken in Kenya as in other countries in Africa to improve fiscal mobilization and budgeting for health, I think are um, absolutely critical because that's where the long-term sustainable answer to these challenge lies. Um, certainly from a global fund perspective, um, we are committing a significant proportion of our resources in the countries most affected by climate change. In fact, 71% of the global fund's grant resources, which amounts to about $9 billion, are committed to the 50 most climate vulnerable countries in the world.